coach. Like coach called me the line for a long time. Uh, coach both UAB and Stanford. So I'm um, uh, really a offensive line coach has transitioned into strength. Um, when I went to high school, I was up at Al, uh, at, at Allen Creek. He hired me at Athens. I was going to be the OC. And uh, after the board meeting, just as like a oh yeah hey. So that kind of started my journey in the strength world, and I kind of fell in love with it. Um, I will say this. Uh, how many of y'all ran your way programs in high school? All right. So here's, I really believe, I really believe that offensive line coaches can be really good strength coaches because you're so, as an offensive line coach, so progression driven, right? Everything that, that you do as an offensive line coach, you're just build and watch, right? And strength is the exact same way. Here's the other thing. How many of you have coaches that come in the weight room and sit around and call on and they damn don't they don't want to be in there? Shit, they don't want to be in there, right? Well, as an offensive line coach, you're used to mastering the monotony, right? So a lot of coaches go in there. How many times can I watch these kids fly? Right? Well, hell for you. Right? Just over and over and over again. So I think it kind of lends itself to being the same world. Now, like Coach said, I am going to challenge you a little bit, okay? So, I told Coach Yeager, we were talking out in the hallway, and I've known Coach Yeager for a long time, and uh, we've talked a lot of ball over the years and all that, and he's always real open to new things, and if you've ever watched film on his kids, they do different things. They, I wonder what he's doing, you know, what, what, what's Coach Yeager got going on with that? You know, I remember watching recruiting film with his kids going, Ask him about that, which I will not note, note down or whatever. So it, I am going to challenge you a little bit on how you think about some things, how we are all brought up on how to coach offensive line and, and all that kind of thing. So first thing, I'm going to hit a few minutes of strength stuff, and then I'm, I'm getting off of that, okay? So the question, and I don't, look, I don't like talking at you. I want y'all to participate. What's one thing everybody in the room wants to allow them to do better? Ben. Ben, what's something else? Move, quick feet, right? That That's always a thing in offensive line world is, damn, his feet are so slow, right? His feet are slow, his feet are slow. Now, you may have, and I know you were talking about, you had a couple of the smaller lines. That ain't their problem, right? They ain't got ass, right? Okay, but them six, six, 300 pound kids, I need their feet to be better and whatever. So here's the thing, what that simply means and is this, rate of force development is king, okay? The rate of force de development is what quick feet is. Quick feet is not going through one of them stupid ladders that you see on Instagram, okay? Here's the thing with that. While doing those kind of things is actually not a bad thing, it can be great rhythm work, it can be great coordination work, it can be good. The issue is there is zero force being transmitted, none. There's no force going through the ladder. That ain't sports, okay? That's not sports. If you're not producing force, you don't get into a game and tippy tap everywhere, okay? That's not what you do. Even when you're pass setting, it can look tippy toeish to or tippy tap or whatever you want to say to a person that has no idea what we do, but y'all understand that there's force being put in that ground, right? So rate of force development is king, okay? So, having said that, and I don't know why my transitions did that, how many of y'all had that strong dude that can't move a freaking soul off the line of scrimmage? Every one of us have had that guy. Hell, we get in the weight room and it's damn February and you're itching the coach, you're whatever. Hell yeah, 600 pound squat. And then he gets out on the field and he just, it's, it's freaking Tarzan and Jane. Am I right? Okay. There's a reason for that. There's a reason for it, and I'm gonna talk about it. One question is, with rate of force development, is why do you lift so slow? Why are you so worried about how much they squat? Okay? When a kid is moving 600 pounds, and there, don't get me wrong, there's times for that. There's times for absolute strength. Getting the bar up with that much weight on you 
But the question is, if rate of force development is king, why are you moving so slow in your rhythm, especially the run? You think about it all the time of how strong can I get this kid? Well, you just said you got the strong kid that can't move any faster. If he has rate of force development issues and he has projection issues, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, okay? So the thing about it is you need to get into other qualities in the weight room, okay? So speed strength. Speed strength is simply lifting loads at 25 to 45% as fast as you can freaking move. I'm talking about explosive. Think of a speed squat, okay? That's what it is. You're putting 35% on the bar and you're moving it as fast as you can. And if you have velocity-based training capabilities, which I'm gonna tell you, some of y'all are, are going, hell, there ain't nothing down weight there. Is. You can get a bench review and it's $500. $500, like you can do a few things and get some bench room units or a VMAX Pro or something like that and you can measure this, okay? And you will you will go in there and you will be unbelievably amazed at how your kids compete when they see time popping up on a phone or an iPad or whatever it is that you got. They freaking compete. Can you, re can you repeat that? The, what did you call that that you mentioned? Velocity-based training. So Velocity there's training. a couple of units that are affordable, even for you at Brayling Mountain, who is a small school. Money is always going to be an issue, right? Mm -hmm. So VMAX Pro is one, and VMAX Pro is an accelerometer. So basically what you do with a VMAX Pro, it's only about that big. You just stick it on the bar, and it attaches to, you can put it on your phone. You can have a phone, you can have, if you got iPads or whatever, and when you move the bar, it tells you how fast the bar is moving, okay? A bench roof, in my opinion, I like the bench roof better. I've used both of them. I like the bench roof better. The bench roof is a linear encoder. So basically, think of this. There is a freaking string attached to your bar down to this thing down on the ground, or you can, all you, it's got magnets on it. You just put it on the side of your, your, your right rail at the bottom, and it's attached to the bar. And so you go down and come up and it, it will tell you that concentric portion of the lift, how fast the bar's moving. And it's pretty reliable. Why? Because it's on the string. Anytime something's Bluetooth, it's like that chip that can, you know, it can miss some reps, it can do this, that, and other. Now it's obviously, there's constraints on it because it is attached to the bar. Hard to do Olympic lifts with it. Um, um, so there's goods and bads. But for $500, it's worth the investment, okay? You know, the other one on the other side of this is strength speed. So now you're moving up to the 45 to 65% range. Okay, so so you're still moving up. And Dave Ballou, who has done this, he's a strength coach at Alabama. He's a friend of mine. He says 64% is king. 64% of their one rep training max is where they're gonna produce the most power. And that guy is an authority on this subject, okay? <clears throat> That's where they spend at Alabama with those dudes they got, that's, this is where they spend the most time. And I've got two kids down there, one of them being a lineman, this is what they do the most of. They do lift heavy, don't get me wrong. And, and we lift heavy, but and a lot of times, depending on what we do, I have some of this built in prior to heavier set. So all we do is we start here and we just work our way up. So I'm hitting those qualities every day. In a good, in a great world, you can hit speed, strength, strength, speed, accelerate to speed, or strength and absolute strength all in one session. So you're hitting it all. Does that make sense? The force velocity curve, you're hitting the entire portion of it. So again, about moving faster and quicker feet, rate of force development, lift faster. If you want your kids to move faster, lift them faster, right? Speed training, absolutely running fast. There's a lot of people that think that well, why does my guard, who's 6'4", 300 pounds, need speed training? Why? Rate of force development. There's nothing you can do, there's nothing, nothing you can do where your body moves faster and produces more force than sprinting, okay? Time them, okay? Get some sort of way to time it. If you've got a timing system, great. Invest in one, it's great for you. But I'm gonna tell you this, you can get a $10 app, but Darkfish, and you can record your kids running, and you can record how fast they're running, and you can post those times, again, they're competing, okay? Even the bigs, we, what I do is, is I'll have skills, mids, and bigs, 
okay? And so I will post times of their sprints and like flies or whatever, and I'll post them that way, right? So bigs, well, they, they're competing against each other to be on top of that chart, okay? But all I'm trying to do is to get them to do something and, and the thought process is, why should I have this kid do this when that ain't what he does? That's exactly why you should do it. That's exactly why. Because he don't ever do it. He needs that, okay? You want him to produce more force? Do things where they can produce more force. Plows and jumping. You gotta be careful with ply metrics with all things linemen. Six, six, 300 pound kid. You gotta be real careful on how much bounding, single leg, those kind of things you do until they are strong enough to be able to take that on. But again, you want them to produce force, do things with them where they're producing force, okay? So all this stuff should be trained on a weekly basis year round, okay? Now all of it kind of goes in and out of your volume. All right, Olympic lifts, again, you don't have to necessarily Olympic lift. There's a lot of things you can do that, that it, it, look, if you suck at teaching the clean, don't teach the clean. Okay? You can do a lot of things. You can clean pull. You don't have to turn the bar over. Okay? Um, we do Olympic lifts because I'm good at teaching it and our kids like doing it. Now we have kids that don't do it. I don't force every kid to do it. When they suck at it, y'all have kids that suck at it, right? They just suck. How long are you going to let your kid go on power cleaning 160 pounds? Like why? Is it because he's a football player and he's supposed to clean? Does that make sense? I actually got that answer one time. Why are we cleaning? Well, we're a football team. We're supposed to clean. What does that mean? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, if they are not good at the lift, I move on from it. Here's the thing. They got no confidence in it. They got no confidence in it. They're not going to load it. They don't load it. They ain't getting no freaking stronger and more powerful. It ain't happening. So I have kids that do nothing but clean pool. They'll clean, they'll hang, they'll clean pull from the floor, they'll clean pull from the hang position, a little trap bar jump with them, whatever. Whatever I can do to get power out of them, right? All right, uh, so here's the thing. Posterior chain development for your world is the most important thing, okay? You play football with a posterior chain, period. You, you actually play sports with a posterior chain, okay? That is everything from your head to your, your feet on the back side. Train it and train it a lot, okay? The front is for show, the back is for go. If you're not careful, you get in the weight room, you push way too much. The bench press, I'll be honest with you, I could do it out in my program. I could throw it out and I wouldn't have a problem with it. The problem is they're football players are supposed to bench press, right? The bench press is great. It's a great upper body force expressor, okay? And so it's good for that. It's also a good mass builder, okay? It's good to help build mass, but you don't bench press on a football field ever. And there's my first little thing for you. You don't ever bench press on a football field. You, you play offensive linemen with back, okay? You control people here, and that is a freaking lass. So how much are you pulling versus pushing, okay? When you're engaged on somebody, as much as we want to say it, we want to punch the hell out of somebody. We want to impale them, right? How often does that happen? I mean, be real. Don't sit here in the clinic and go, you know, we're punching the hell out of people. No, you ain't. No, you ain't. Because a lot of times when you do that, you miss. Or your hands get all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you're passive, and you're really good hand-eye coordination, boom, I can stab, but you ain't freaking punching, really punching anybody. And you damn sure ain't sitting here doing this, right? When you get your hands on somebody, because you got somebody coming back at you, you get on them and you're trying to control them here. And that's all through the latch. You ever looked at a wrestler? Most wrestlers have big old freaking backs on them. Why? Because that's what they do. They freaking pull all the time. Row more in the weight room. You want to have them dang freaking silverback gorilla backs is what you're looking for. That will help you, okay? Grip strength. So again, you get your hands on somebody, you don't let them off of you. How do you train grip strength? Help deadlifts, chin ups, even hanging from the bar if you've got some that can't do it. Carrying, so very 
true in this underused thing in high schools especially it can pick up heavy stuff and carry it okay it's a real simple exercise y'all you're in Coleman right mm -hmm. you know some of them damn country men out there that they ain't never lived in a weight that when you grab their hand it's like holy shit it's like a damn grizzly bear right I mean it's like grew up working. Yeah. They grew up picking up 100 pound bags of fertilizer. They grew up setting posts in the freaking ground, right? They're strong because they pick up heavy stuff and carry it. You can do that in your program and it will have huge <coughs> benefits for you, okay? Just farmer carry. And you can carry all kinds of it. Trap bars, kettlebells, dumbbells, freaking front rack, overhead. We carry it in a, all kinds of different ways. And it has huge impact, it, it, huge impact, and they don't get sore from it. There's no eccentric portion of those carries. They don't get sore. Okay, the only thing that ever gets sore on them is them forearms. Okay, just from holding. Other than that, they're not going to get sore from it. Great all season uh, February winter workout exercise. I have five trap bars in all, on our field. We use them all the time, okay? Uh, hip hinge kind of goes into the posterior domain, uh, posterior chain development. The hip hinge is where you play all those lines, okay? Master it, get really good at it, okay? One of the foundational lifts, I'll tell you this, one of our top three lifts on our football team is the barbell RDL. We push the hell out of it. And how many of you really push it? And I'm talking about really pushing. We had three kids barbell RDL over 400 pounds this year. We've got 24 that are over 315 right now. The hip hinge and developing that posterior chain I think is a great lift, okay? And because you're not bending your knees, people don't think about it as much. But I ask you the question, when do you ever play in full range of motion on the football field? Do you ever play the game in here? Just something to think about, right? Here, it's where you play the game, you know? Just freaking load the shit out of that, right? You know what I'm saying? Get them strong there. Impulse bracing, I got a video of that. Um, so, you know, you're playing off his line, I'm engaged, you put about to get hit from here, right? Now, all of a sudden, I collapse. I'm off my block. There's things you can do in the weight room that can work with that, right? I'll kind of show you a video of some of that mobility work. Look, mobility work ain't gotta be the fancy shancy, you know, hip car and you know this, that. Hey, here's mobility. Get in a goblet squat and sit in the bottom of it. Just sit and breathe. Don't do nothing. Just sit and breathe in a goblet squat. That's mobility work. Okay? So you don't have to be RFR, this, it, FRC, it, it, you ain't got to have all these letters behind your name to work mobility, okay? These are two examples of this. Uh, what that is. Alright, so this is kind of one, it's what we call a flyer squat. They sit at the bottom end of it. And the second kid, you, re you really can see, that kid's 6'4", 320, okay? They'll get in the bottom end, and you'll see the next kid really do it well when he comes up. But I'll have them nasal breathe, in through the nose, out through the mouth. And you'll notice that when they're breathing, they'll actually sink. They'll sink. They'll sink. And then all we're doing with that little rotation at the bottom end, it's just working that internal external rotation out of their hips again bend bend how do we bend better bend get in the weight room and bend right uh, this is kind of something we'll do like I was talking about some of that impulse bracing thing okay so all they're doing is this is called a supine reactive detail is what I call it right so he's just hanging from there. The other person is dropping a foot with not knowing, he don't know which one's gonna be dropped. So you're getting a lot of benefit out of this. You're getting some of that bracing, but it's anti-extension work, okay? They'll also do it from a prone position. So they get on their hands here, looking down at the ground, they're holding
holding their feet and now their, uh, their legs dropping the other way, but all it is some bracing work. You can do things like a paw off iso hold, stretch a band out, they're sitting right here, and then get somebody to perturb their hand, just slapping their hands around, they're having a brace. Now do it, close their eyes. They don't know what's happening, what's coming, they're all of a sudden they're just hit, getting hit from all over the place. You can take a band, step inside of it, pull it up around your neck and stretch right here. Okay, so I've got band underneath my feet, around my neck. Now I'm stretching band here and I'm holding in this athletic position. And then you can just walk around and just pop them. Just, they're just getting hit from all over the place, right? They don't know where it's coming. They're just working that bracing that happens to you when you're playing the offensive line and you don't know where you're gonna get hit from. A couple of things we'll do in the weight room. This is called a power index. So this is taking their vertical jump and their body weight. You take the square root of both of those and then you multiply them and it gives you a number between zero and 100. Kids understand that, why do you, just people will ask me, why do you do that? Because kids understand zero and 100. They see it every single day in school, okay? So you take the square root of their body weight, the square root of their vertical jump, and then you multiply them and it spits out a number between zero and 100. Now, this is the first how many you ever out of our team, offensive lineman, defensive lineman. That's a corner and his brother plays in the NFL, okay? That's a running back who has really, he's a high jumper. Defensive lineman, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, inside linebacker, defensive line. Y'all see a theme there. What's happening is those guys are pushing up more mass. It doesn't matter that the jump and as high as someone else's, they're having to move more mass and that matters. So in other words, if I strap, what is that, 130 pounds to that guy, he probably ain't going to get to that number. He gonna, I doubt he's going to get to that freaking number. Does that make sense? Same thing, this is momentum, okay? It's kind of the same thought process. This kid's 318. His fly time in, the 10, or in a 10-yard fly with a 20-yard run-in was a 1.20 seconds. And all that does, you just take their body weight and their fly time, and it gives you a momentum score. Offensive lineman, offensive lineman, defensive lineman, defensive lineman. That's a tight end, defensive lineman, offensive lineman, inside lineman, same thing. They're having to move more mass that way, so it takes more force, that's all it is. So it's a way for them to get on top of the charts where them skill guys are always on the top of the chart whenever you're just posting a vertical or you're just posting times. Y'all ain't got a chance, you know what I'm saying? You post this and all of a sudden the linemen are, all right, look at that, right? Okay, all right. So I think I'm about done with this, okay? Now I'm gonna start moving into some other stuff. All right, so movement patterns. Any track guys in here? Anybody cut the track? All right, how many throw guys in here? Any throw guys? Blocks, right? What are blocks for? Starts, all right, well, what does it do for you? Traction. Traction? What do you say? Come out low. Come out low? Yeah. Okay. So the angle of that thing and the way they're set up in blocks, it allows them to do what? Push out. Right up. Push out. What it allows them to do is project their center of mass further here. Hmm. Okay. You see these body positions, right? That, that is set on an angle to where they are pushing that way, okay? So just think about this. I got any science majors in here? I know you're an English guy. Mm -hmm. Science? Yeah. All right. So physics? Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. So here's the question. Can you, is there any way that we can sit in this room and deny physics? No. You can't deny physics. You agree with that? And this is a science guy. You can't deny physics, okay? It is. Your human logic cannot defy physics. Meaning, you just sitting there going, well, I don't, that don't make sense. I think this makes sense. So we're just gonna do that. That platform allows them to push horizontally to displace center of mass that way, okay? So what ends up happening, okay, you put
push down to go up. Okay? And we're, are, we, or are we, is anybody denying, or is anybody got, and listen, hey, I told you I don't want to talk at you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you. You push down, so when you vertical jump, you're pushing down into the ground, correct? Mm -hmm. That's the only way you're going to propel up. So you push back to go forward. Am I right on that? Okay. So <laughs> I just said it. it. That's science. There's there's no way you can dispute that thing. Otherwise, if I vertical jumped and I did this, I should be going way up there. Or if I broad jump. Other way, it don't, it don't work that way. Okay, all right. So your center of mass displacement is 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 what you're looking for. So what's happening here is you're looking to get your center of mass, and I don't care who it is. I could be a running back, I could be an offensive lineman, but if I'm here and I want to be there, your feet have nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Okay, it's all about where this travels to. Okay? And where that travels to is all dictated by how much force is being put into the ground. Okay, So when you are running horizontally, if I'm in those track blocks or I'm out of the track blocks and I'm just running as fast as I can here, I have to push back and displace my center mass. U ultimately, I'm trying to displace it as far as I can. Well, with that, now I, I'm glad I'm the first one. You know why? Because are you going to get up here and shut down? Awesome. Are you talking about the power, by the way? My own power. God's play. Oh. <laughs> anyway. So now when you show film, when Coach Yeager shows film, I hope you look at it and go, look at that. That's a shin angle. Yeah. It's all about where your shins are pointed to is where your body's going. If your shins are up, you're going up. When I start from Position. And next time y'all go out and you, I don't care what you're doing, look at your receivers, look at film. When those receivers are here, the very first thing they do is they're either going to push back to this one. Why? Because it's already got shin angle in it. And mo everybody is going to start off that rear foot a little bit. Okay. Actually, when they're running the 40 at the combine, the very first thing that moves is the rear heel. Just so you know. That's why in the strength world, there's a big about the times being BS and it's true, okay? The very, if you really want to know how fast a guy runs a 40 in, look at his rear heel. Film it, rear heel movement, that's your actual time because that's the first thing that's going to move. Not the hand, not the, it's the rear heel. Anyway, so if I'm a receiver and I'm up right here, they may push to this one or they may come, they're, regardless, they're going to end up coming forward and the very first thing that happens is that knee drops to the ground. Just go look at it. I have a kid. You're fairly young. You, you want to do some demos on me? Yeah, in a minute. I mean, just go, all right, come on. Get over there. When I say go, when I say go, just run out right to there. It splits stanches like you're freaking racing. You're, it's, it's third grade, man. It's third grade. <laughs> It's third grade and you're running me for the blow pop, right? <laughs> the winner gets the blow pop. All right, All right you ready? Yeah. Watch that leg. Go. You see it drop? It's because your shin has to be in as far horizontal as it can in order to produce force to go that way. Okay? Now, stay with me. We're, we're building here. I'm about to really freaking piss some of y'all. All right, so the shin angles is what you're looking for. That's what you're looking for, okay? And you coach receivers, right? So you saw that all the time. And it probably pissed you off if they pushed back a little bit and all that, right? Did it pit, I mean, you're like, why, why are you stepping back to go forward and all that? It's because they're shin angle. They have shin angle in this leg already. So they use it to get themselves going to get that shin angle going. Does that make sense? Whatever you're doing, it's always going to be the exact same thing. All right. So foot strikes when you're running is what's key. So foot striking underneath the hip is what's going to propel you forward. 
here's what's happening. When you're running, and every one of you have these, every, every, because every, honestly, every kid wants to do this. When they're running, everything they do is they step out front. How many of y'all heard people talking about stride lane? Right? Stride lane. Stride lane ain't nothing to do with it. Ain't got nothing to do with it. It's all about center mass. It's how far their center mass. We've got a kid that's playing at LSU right now. And we got one in Tennessee too. They're, I don't know which one's faster. I know this. The one at LSU is 5'9, 100, he's 200 pounds. And his stride length is un freaking believable. Unbelievable. And he's 5'9. It ain't his stride length. He's so damn powerful that he looks like a freaking deer. Like he is jumping every time he sprints. That's just, he's fast. He's a 6'8, 160 guy. Okay? I mean, he's fast. And he's 5'9. Now, Ricky is 6'1. And so he's long, you know, he's a lot longer and all that. And his stride length is stupid. You put them next to each other, I don't know which one would win. I got a pretty good idea that I would do it through splits. But they look the same, but their body types are way different. But what's happening is their center mass is moving. And what you're looking for is the foot strikes to be back underneath the hip. Why? Because we've already established that for horizontal propulsion, I have to be pushing this way. So when your kids strike out front, what's happening is their foot cannot leave the ground. I'm just telling you right now, it cannot leave the ground until the hip is clear. So what happens is when their foot hits out here, they have to pull themselves through here before their foot can leave the ground. So if I'm striking there, that rate of force development's higher, and also I'm leaving the ground faster. Now stay with me. <coughs> All right, now, angle of foot. Y'all ever watch fur games? Okay, I watch it a little bit, not a lot. If you watch the angle and copy of some pro games, and I'll go ahead and tell you, they don't know why, because I, I, I used to go to Toe, toe Clinic every year. I know some pro coaches, whatever. They don't know why they're doing it, they just know it works. You ever seen them guys freaking moving like this, their feet are out here? It's because they're getting their whole foot in the ground. And here's the thing, if, all right, here's what I'm gonna tell you to do. I want you to get up on your toes and vertical jump. How high you think you're gonna go? About how high you think you're gonna go. If I make you jump off your toes, do you think you're gonna go higher on your toes or your foot flat in the ground when you're jumping? So it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, exactly, why? Because you can put, you can produce more force for that. Now, are you gonna end up taking off from there? Sure. But to produce force, your whole foot, the maximum amount of force, your whole foot needs to be in the ground. Does that make sense? Now, and I, I'm not actually gonna make you jump. <laughs> <laughs> when you're running, you're not actually getting flat-footed, okay? You actually are here. But here's the thing, when you're an offensive lineman, Y'all all want your feet flat in the ground, right? Can you tell me why? Is that one of the things where you've always been told? Larry Vander Hayden told me um, 20 years ago, you want their foot flat in the ground. You remember Larry, don't you? He said, you gotta have, if he can't get his feet in the ground, it's flat in the ground, I don't want it. If he gets in a stance and his feet ain't flat in the ground, I ain't taking it. Why is that? He just, he ain't got any. He probably can't get his feet flat in the ground. He's never been taught how to. Okay? You want their foot flat in the ground because that's where you're going to produce the most force. So when I'm taking this guy on, I don't want to be on my forefoot. I want my whole foot in the ground because that's where I can produce the most force from. Does that make sense? That's why you have those guys tilting those feet. Okay? And still traveling whatever direction they want to because they can keep their whole foot in the ground and they can travel through the arch of their foot. Okay? All right. Oh, is any of uh, any y'all on Twitter? Y'all seen Jim McAnally get all set? <laughs> yeah. All right. So I've, I've seen him speak a whole bunch of times. And I'm telling you right now, he don't know why. Like biomechanically, he don't know why. He just knows it works. I promise you. He just knows that it works. 
He's been talking about lunging. Have y'all heard that? He's been talking about these feet being underneath the hips. He don't know why, but he knows it works. Okay? I'm about to tell you why. Okay? All right. So the vertical jump versus the broad jump, where are we producing force from? Harrier jet takes off straight up in the air. Y'all ever seen one of them things? Where is it? Where's the force being produced? Vertically, right? So it can go that way, right? Pushing a truck. You get up to a foot, a truck, you're going to push it out in the parking lot. You're going to be pushing back way to get it going, correct? Okay. Power clean. You're producing vertical force, correct? So the idea is to get that power clean that we've talked about, rate of force development, and the squat that you're trying to get your kids strong at. And we're trying to get them to produce force really fast. It don't do us any good when they're doing it vertically. We got to teach them how to do it horizontally. Okay. Because that's why you had that strong guy that can't move your grandmother off the line of scrimmage. He has no idea how to project all that strength this way to go that way. That's the issue, okay? All right, so the question is, are you teaching your players to gain ground? Okay, now, I, I, I did. Why? Because everybody I ever heard speak, everybody I ever talked to said that when you're going to do a backside cutoff, you gain ground. Why? Because if I'm going that way, I want to step that way. I don't want to step away from where I'm going. When I'm pulling on the counter, I gain ground to where I'm going. Why? Because in my mind, it makes more sense to step to where I'm going. Here's the issue. stepping, whatever you're, you grew up listening to, but what his body is actually doing is, is getting into that vertical or that horizontal shin space to where he can accelerate as fast as possible. Your body knows what it needs to do to get from point A to point B. But what's happening is in our minds as coach, logically, why would I step away from where I'm going do that. Hey, how many of you have had a kid that's never false step before? You sit down and say, there's probably something to that. I've never coached a kid that didn't false step. Never. I've never coached one that didn't false step. We're not in a cult of 20 here. Okay? There's a reason. Your body knows. How many of you have ever had kids that are you go out and, you, and I told you to go jog uh, a mile. What's the first thing you're going to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, we hate that shit, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, science says you can breathe better. Your diaphragm opens up. There's probably something to it. If every human being wants to bend over when they're tired, there's probably something to it. Every human being wants to false step. There's probably something to it. Your body knows that it has to get into that shin angle in order to accelerate, okay? <clears throat> Here's some things that are happening here. Every one of these guys, you can see pushing off that rear foot, shin angle here, knee coming up. Hopefully it would strike back underneath the hip so we can get right back into that on the other side. Exact same thing here, going to run, pushing here, shin angle here, that foot come back underneath the hip so we replicate the process. Got the 49ers and the Eagles here. Look at the offensive linemen. Shin angles, everything going back. They're going forward because they're pushing back. This kid's broad jumping, pushing back to go forward. Now here's 
probably the best offensive lineman in the NFL right now. Right? He's unfreaking believable if you watch him play the game. Here's him working. Look at his knee dipping to the ground. Horizontal displacement. Watch his hips displace as he's pushing through. Now, that's one of those times where I used to go to the film clinic and I'd go, Coach, do you know what I work with compared to what you work with? It don't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. It's every human being. I can get every one of us old and fat as we are, and you're going to do the exact same thing. If you're not coached into not doing those things, that's what's going to happen. Does that make sense? All right. So lateral thinking. We've gone from horizontal to lateral. It's the exact same thing. There's no difference. Right? I had him on a pull just a second ago. Everything is happening. If I push back, I'm not going to travel lateral. I have to push laterally to move laterally, right? So everything's happening the exact same. The issue is now I'm going that way. So I'm pushing off that inside edge with that whole foot on the ground, and I'm displacing the center of mass going this way now, okay? But all the mechanics are same. And then if I'm running that counter pull, if I'm trapping or whatever it is, or I'm running the butt sweep, somebody's talking about the tandem pull truck series is a popular one of exact same stuff. You're pushing laterally, and then hopefully that foot's striking back underneath the hip. If it's not, if you're watching your kids uh, do this, and they are constantly doing this every time they step, they're pushing down to go up and they're having to pull their foot through. Your foot ain't leaving the ground. It ain't leaving the ground until the hip is through, okay? So don't it make more sense to teach them running mechanics than when we sprint them, okay? Now I'm getting to that point when I'm running the truck and my damn guard ain't getting out there and I'm yelling like hell at him, I'm saying he's tired and he's fat and he's whatever, no. I'm just not letting the kid or helping the kid move efficiently in order to get out into the, in front of the play, okay? All right, and again, this is, this is kind of where I'm going to, is we, we've kind of thought we're smarter than physics with some of this stuff, right? It just makes sense, right? Well, step where I'm going. Right? Well, if I'm going that way, why wouldn't I do this? Well, mechanically, it doesn't work the other way, right? All right, so, Lateral thinking is the exact same thing. He's making a cut right here, the great Barry Sanders, who could make cuts like no other, right? If you young guys ain't seen Barry Sanders film, he's the guy you want uh, running behind you. Lateral displacement, okay? He's able to cut and displace his center of mass. Here's the thing. If you're, how many of you coach defense? All right, so if you're coaching defense and I've got the ball, you tell them to come up, break down, right? You want to close space, am I right? That's the big thing on defense is closing space. Space is my friend offensively. It is your enemy, so you want to close space. Why? Ease up on the worker. There you go. So if I have less room, that literally means I have less room to displace my center of mass to make me win. Well, if your kids are cutting and their center of mass ain't going nowhere, that's why. Their center of mass. So the next time you see a kid, you know, that guy, that real slow receiver you got, he does this and then he just gets tackled, right? It's because when he does this, him and then the real fast guy, the real fast guy does this and he ends up over here. Well, the fast guy just ends up like right there and just gets plastered, right? He's not putting any force into the ground and displacing the center of mass. Ricky Anderson, y'all can tell I'm old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything up there is older, but. All right, so comes out of a lateral stance. He pushes through that inside arch of that foot. Leg drives up, strikes back underneath the hip over and over and over again. That's acceleration. Now, once you get into top end speed, okay, everything's happening the same. I'm just striking back underneath the hip as I'm moving here, boom, I'm just striking back here, okay? Now, most of the game is played in the accelerator, well, all the game is 
displayed in the acceleration phase for those offensive linemen, you're always going to have body language. <laughs> I should be striking back and underneath, right? All right. Long jump, horizontal displacement. They are running clear, right? Horizontal displacement. Vertical jump, vertical displacement, right? Pushing down to go up. Offensive linemen. Shin angles, shin angles, lateral out of the quarterback. I don't care who you're looking at. Shin. I just put a video. I just put a picture up here, and look at it. You can see it everywhere, and that's why sometimes your kids are doing things that you don't want them to do. It's because they're out there just playing the game, man. You know what I'm saying? They're playing the game. When all this stuff happens out there, y'all remember playing. Right? I mean, did, yes, I tried to do those first couple of things the way Coach did it, and then it just, I'm either a ball or I'm not, right? That's why, you know, you've got some of those weaker kids that ain't, you know, they may not be as strong as the next dude or whatever, but they, like your kid, get after somebody's tail, we can work with that, right? If they'll do what I'm telling them to do, how I'm telling them to do it, until that play is really going, and then they just play ball, then we can freaking win with that. Your body is going to take over for you, but you can see through all this, he's pushing down to, or back to take that thing on. Because when I got pressure coming to me here, if I'm pushing vertically, I'm screwed. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have to be pushing back in order to project any sort of force forward. And that includes when you're taking a block on, right? Or, or blocking somebody. You have to be projecting. That's why that strong guy can't move anybody. He's not projecting this way into the man to move him in the direction that he's wanting to go. Checking his shin angles. Check shin angles. Okay? And that will get to your bend part, Coach Bailey, right? Which gets back to the weight room. Have I taught him how to properly hinge? And is he maintaining that, right? All right. Sign of a good coach. I really believe this. Sign of a good coach is one that knows when not to coach. Okay? Let things develop. Quit coaching so freaking much. You know what I'm saying? Let the kid figure it out. Here's the thing. When you're small, if any of you ever messed around with something, right? Like taking something apart. Well, don't coach your kids so much. Let them figure it out, right? Same thing with your kids. Okay? Let them figure some things out. Again, well, I just I covered that already. Stepping under yourself is actually the most efficient way to accelerate. Again, now when you're looking at film, look at the shins, okay? Look at the shins. A quick story about that, our tight end coach came to me and said, you know, our tight end, he's a pretty good player. He'll end up signing somewhere. He said, he gets on his block and he's, in, he's, he's like he's stuck there. His feet don't move, okay? Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Feet and concrete. I used to call it feet and concrete. Feet and concrete, son. Feet are in concrete, right? Move your feet. Check his body position. If you expend all your energy to do a hip extension, your feet can't move. Okay? Your feet cannot move if I have no shin angle. They're not going anywhere. Okay? So check their body position, which I'm going to get to in, in, in a little bit more in a second. All right. So now I'm really going to piss y'all off. Okay? So I grew up freaking rolling hips. Uh, Larry Vander Hayden, my offensive line coach, and um, he kind of, that's who I got into coaching through, he's my offensive line coach. Um, yeah. Snapping, or, or he would say rolling the hips. Okay. Alright, so here's the thing. I want y'all to think about a power clean, or full clean, whatever, power clean, clean, just clean. Alright, so when you address the bar, you're in that hinged position, correct? Okay. Have you ever thought about why you start there? Why? What's the why? Why are we doing that? Huh? Because it's taller. That's where you can produce the most power from. Mm -hmm. I agree. You're in a hard hinge, mm -hmm. and if you're doing it correctly, you're not squatted into a full range of motion. Freaking in that hinge position right here. Good freaking flat back, right? See us strength coaches are good at actually teaching what you want. You're in the most powerful position you can be in. Right? Now, if you clean from blocks, that's even better. Because 
does that actually get you up into actual football playing position? So now I'm focusing right here. This is where I play football from. So if I'm cleaning from block, that is the position that you can produce the most power, vertical power from. Is, is anybody, would anybody dispute that? I mean, seriously, if you don't, or if you don't understand that, like say so, your feet are flat in the ground, I'm hands, my posterior chain's turned on. When I say push to your chain, I ain't just talking about your hamstrings. I'm talking about the entire back side of your body is turned on. Your freaking lats are lit up. Sounds like you're blocking, right? That's why it's a, that's why it's a good lift, right? So everything is lit up. That's where I can produce the most power from, all right? So now once you push and you get up to extension, what has happened? You've released all your energy. So all the power is dispelled at that point. So can you produce a lot of power from here? So the power production is gone. Is anybody, that's again, it kind of goes back to physics. There's no more power production happening at that point, okay? First of all, there's nowhere, there's lever wise, there's nowhere for the power to come from, okay? So there's no more power production, okay? So now I'm getting back underneath the bar. That kind of goes back into that impulse bracing that we're talking about. That's why cleans are good for linemen, okay? But the power has been produced and you're strongest in that hinged position, correct? And when you have extend, got into hip extension, your power is gone. Why are we teaching your linemen to draw their hips? Why are you teaching them? You are taking them out of a powerful position. Now, the thought behind it is good, okay? Because this is where I've produced all my, okay, well, what happens if the guy didn't like it anyway? <laughs> right. Does that make sense? Now you're yelling at the kid to keep his pads down. Well, guess what? If you're in knee and hip extension, your shoulders can't be down. You're like this. Does that make sense? When you teach hips, my shoulders are going to go back. It is a power clean. So you're teaching them to come off, do that, power's gone. You better be better. Does that make sense? Like you better be better. If you're better, then you're better. I don't care what you do at that point. But if you're not better, you're screwed at that point. You're hanging on for dear life or you're working the old reposition. That makes sense? In other words, it kind of goes back to learn what not to coach. I don't believe you have to coach the snapping and the rolling of the hips because your kids are going to do it naturally. Meaning, something real good's happening. I'm rolling that dude up over on top of the linebacker or something. No shit, my ass coming, right? I'm just starting do anything I can to keep him away from the running back or the quarterback or whatever. I'm expelling my energy or my power production right there in an emergency situation. But I'm going to tell you, if you watch it, if your kids are rolling somebody up, they're getting into that automatically. Yeah. Why? Because they're running, they're moving themselves out of the hinge position. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I had a Forward F-150 right here, and I said, Coach, come push this truck. How many of you are going to walk up to it like this? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Why are we teaching our kids to do that? You're going to sit just like this for as freaking long as you can until you get it rolling. And then once it's rolling, now I've got it going and I'm moving up into it. Okay? So, your power production spent once you get into that hip extension and all that. That's one thing I got, you know, roll your hips, but stay lower. It's not physically possible. It's not humanly possible for you to do that. So you're, you're literally yelling at your kid for something that they can't, it, no human can do. And you're sitting there yelling at them about it, right? All right, so that's, please don't kill me. And this ain't Mountain Brook. Coach, it looks kind of like Mount Brody. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right. That looks better than us. So, here's the thing. Shoes. All right. 
Now look, you gotta understand, I had shoes. Shit, we used to run three on three on the head shoes. Okay, believe me, I, I, there ain't nothing, I, I've done all, so all this, I listen, all this stuff is me talking to me, you know what I'm saying? How many of you want your kids in that position in their life? How many of you want their kids in that position in their life? Look at that freaking flexion in the spine, right? How all he's trying to do is stay on the shoe. He's, he's, he's making you happy by not hitting his head on the pole. But he ain't actually freaking doing anything. You're literally wasting time. Again, I'm sorry for that. But listen, if you got shoes and you're a shoot guy, it's kind of how I started doing it. I, I freaking filmed my endo. And I started looking. What the hell am I doing? I'm trying to get, I don't know if you remember Royus. Royus was that damn tackle I had at Sandra. I had one that was 6'7", 340 pounds. He's a freaking good. Being like he could freaking ask the guy's spot and all that. And I was putting him underneath the sheet to get him to go lower. And I went, you know, the kid, he's like a damn Sasquatch under there, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just everything he can to like move forward and stay underneath the thing. And I'm filming this thing and I'm like, look at the way he looks. I mean, he, he looks like I would never want him to look like that when he's blocking. What am I doing? So, that's the end of it. Uh, I hope I didn't piss some of you off too bad. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, offensive line coaches, the great thing about us is we're hard-headed as hell. You have to be to sit in there with a freaking OC sometimes, right? Okay, I mean, it just is what it is. Especially the OC that has never coached up front before. He's the quarterback guru, yeah. right? There's two kinds of OCs. There's the guys that get it and the guys that don't, right? So you have to be hard-headed in a lot of ways, but always be open-minded, I think, to maybe questioning whether what you're doing is um, just what you learned and I'm doing it because that's the way I learned it, or is that actually... Now, hopefully you watch film and you see something. Anybody got any questions on anything? Yeah, I do. Um, okay, so you made a statement at the beginning when you were in the strength and conditioning portion, and you said, okay, this is the question. Since rate of force development is king, when is the correct time, or how, how frequently should you load up the ball? Like, go Here's the thing. Run. Every high school kid, and I'll be honest with you, every y'all's kids, depending on where they're coming from, most kids need strength that's the, they, they need like high school kids they need strength okay but it gets to a point I've got a 154 pound kid right now that we don't back squat we have to squat he's 154 pounds and he'll hit 415 for triples at what point am I what, what am I doing how much stronger do I need this kid? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, is that gonna make him that much better of a player? If you take your kid from 493 pounds to 500 pounds, is he gonna be that much better of a player, right? Okay, so at that point, let's move and do some other things, like some of those force production things with base breath velocity based training and all that kind of thing. It's a feeling, but listen, even with those kids, I will still load the bar. Now, here's the thing. I get my kids, our football kids, I get our football kids starting in seventh grade, okay? So they're starting in seventh grade. By the time they get to be seniors, they've been in the weight room almost six years. So I got some kids that are pretty far advanced. But I also have some kids that I get out or whatever that start in ninth grade that freaking get there. Because here's the deal. Said principle, which applies to offensive line play too, okay? So when you, the body is going to adapt to what is imposed on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And kids will get stronger at a really high rate, okay? Now once they kind of get up into that five and six year training age, their grains are gonna go way smaller. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it gets to a point where how much stronger do I need to get? 
if we've already established that that kid is real, real strong, can't hit nobody. I mean, it happens, right? And then you've got Rob Wright, who's 173 pounds for us, and we're doing everything we can to get him on the field. Why? Because the sucker is always around the football field, always around the football. He ain't fast enough to play safety for us in our league. He ain't big enough to play inside linebacker. All I know is where the ball is, he is. You know what I'm saying? Now, he plays Thompson, and one of them freaking guards comes out on him, and he can't run around them all the time. They're just going to like eat him. Like he ain't going to, he's going to cease to exist. You know what I'm saying? That kid needs as much strength work and weight just getting mass on him as we can. You know what I'm saying? The other kid's a receiver, and he's a freaking triple jumper. He's killing it in track. I don't need the kid that much stronger. You know what I'm saying? So it's just kind of a feel thing. You know what I mean? But they do need to load the bar. Don't don't get me wrong. They always need to load the bar. But at some point, we got to transition from just simply putting weight on the bar. Why? Because well, that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're supposed to load the bar in the weight room and see how much we can lift. Since Why? you mentioned that, with the kid. Um, one needs load, one needs you know heavyweight, he needs to put on mass, and the other maybe not so much. The next question that I had is related to that, but more um, more pointed at position grouping, right? So what I what I wrote was is strain relative. Would you differentiate an offensive line skill group from say a skill group? You know, um, would you differentiate between those two groups? I do. In in regard to strain, like how much load you put on the bar. I do. You don't have to. I do because I guess what I'm asking is 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 rate of force development more of a king to a wide receiver than he would be to king for everybody. I don't give a damn who you are. If you're playing if you're throwing shot put, it's rate of force development. If you're playing baseball, it's rate of force development. If you're I don't, it don't matter. If you're playing soccer, it's rate of force development. Right. It's king no matter what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Now the loads will be different. Here's the thing: the bigger a kid is. The more muscle mass he has, the more capability he has at moving more weight. Why? Because the muscle is bigger. Yeah. My muscle is way bigger than his. Now, he could be relative, there's such thing as relative strength. That kid I got is 154 pounds, his relative strength is off the freaking charts. Like, if you take his numbers and match it with his body weight compared to some of my linemen, he is way stronger. Way stronger. So his relative strength is there. Why do I keep loading him? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But the fact that I have more muscle mass at some point means I'm going to be able to move more weight. You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean I got to just sit there and do it all the time. Okay. And here's the thing: just because you're moving lighter loads, don't mean you're not getting stronger. Because listen, those lighter loads are going to increase. So if you're if you're speed squatting with 185 pounds, it ain't like you're going to keep on speed squatting with 885 pounds. At some point, you're going to be up at 265 speed squatting. Does that make sense? It, don't, it, it, it doesn't have to be a, it, it, and that's part of the issue is when you walk in the weight room and you expect them guys to have freaking plates on the bars, right? Plates on the bars. Well, listen, I challenge you to this. Instead of necessarily weight on the bar, how fast can you move the bar? We got Watt Club. Any of y'all ever done uh, 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 like thousand pound club? Mm -hmm. We got Watt Club. One thousand pound, one thousand Watt Club, two thousand Watt Club, three thousand Watt Club. Okay, I had one kid that got four thousand watts, but he's in Texas now. He's freaking stupid. Okay, but we have like wattage, meaning on those VBT devices, instead of how much weight's on the bar, it's how fast I'm moving the bar. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing. So that takes into, that power is the velocity of which you're lifting mass, right? So at 25 to 30% of your one rep max, you're not gonna be generating the wattage that you are at what they said, 64%. That's the master place, 64%, because you're gonna be moving loads at that intensity really, really fast. That's where the wattage is. You're gonna freaking blow these light bulbs out all right, so 64% is king, all right? And the whole king, the whole thing is how fast you're moving the bar. You never spoke about reps. So my, are you saying that when your velocity, like if you're at this velocity, 
and that velocity comes down, you probably should stop the set. And so it's yeah, different it's for everybody. Yes. It's so it's different for everybody. It depends. You can actually on cert like that bench roof or with perch, which we're about to get perch units, uh, you can set a fatigue. So in other words, when you go past a 20% threshold, it'll blank at you and you stop the rep, no matter how many reps it is. It could be three reps or it could be six reps. So you may have eight reps, I may have four reps. Exactly right. It depends on where you're going with it. Now, the other thing you can do is, you know, you say you're hitting triples, right? So at, let's say you're gonna go to strength speed and you're at 60%. So at 60%, you can actually use your percentages and it it works with the time. So the way that those things work, it's measured in meters per second. Does that make sense? So if you're lifting 60% of your back squat max, you're gonna be aiming for around 0.7 meters per second, okay? So now if you got triples, so let's say you got five triples, you're going five sets of three, okay? If the kid hits and he's a, he's below or a, above the 7-0, say he hits a 7-9, a 7-7, and a 7-8, well, what are we gonna do? Come on, what would you do? If he's below? If he's above, if oh, he's moving gotta move, gotta move the weight up. Yeah, move a little weight, weight up, up, right? Okay. Now when he hits below, what are we doing? You gotta, you gotta decrease, or either decrease stop, like, take you know, a little weight off. Your, yeah. Take a little weight off. If you we're trying to rep. get this quality, let's take a little weight off. Weight off. Could, so what this does is, how many of y'all lift? Anybody like get in the weight room and get after it? All right. You go in there sometimes and you feel good, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> juicy day, right? And then you go in there sometimes like, shit. Kids feel the same way. The kids feel the same way. So what that allows you to do is take advantage of them days when they're feeling good, and in the days when they're not feeling good, and you're taking that weight off, you're still getting what you want. You're still getting the force production that you're wanting. Because you don't ever know. Kids, parents may get divorced. Kid may not. Yeah, some people in the DT community. Kid may not have had anything to eat since lunch yesterday. I mean, that's a very real freaking thing, man. I know at Gaston City, when I was there, this kid, they didn't, they didn't have nothing to eat. They didn't have freaking food. You know what I'm saying? They didn't have anything to eat. So they may not be feeling good. Now, all of a sudden, you get a meal or two in them, shoo, they come in there ready to roll. You know what I'm saying? So it just allows you to dictate the load. Basically, it's on time, right? And how fast they're moving the bar. And you're working that rate of force development. Do y'all ever do like anything with like the, uh, I would, I would assume another thing too, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's faster toward the end, correct? Like when, you, when you're doing your speed squat, it's, it's slower at the bottom. And so, yes. do y'all do anything like, um, or is there anything out there, I would think like there could be deficiencies in somebody's range of motion that you could pick up on. And to me, it could dictate a lot of things if you've got a weakness in the range of motion, if you're going meters per second. Well, here's the thing. Um, the bar is always going to be hottest as you're traveling through extension. I don't care if you're power cleaning. Right. It, look, one of those, the VMAX Pro that I was talking about, this accelerometer, it actually will tell you where the bar, the bar is hottest. It, uh, it'll show like a person sitting there and it'll go like blue, green, yellow, red. It'll show you where the bar was moving fastest and it'll actually show you the bar path and all that as well. Um, that's where Justice Finkley was so freaking good, was from here to here, he was unbelievable. I mean, I'll never be around another kid like him, okay? And I could see those things, and I was using a VMAX Pro at, at that time. He's unbelievable. I mean, this kid, this kid split joint 350. I mean, he's unfreaking believable You know what Tori told me he was weak at? was getting out of the hole. Yeah, that, that's what I think would, you know, like toward the end, everybody gets pretty close to the same, but what would make the difference in a Well, here's athlete? the thing. So those things will tell you average velocity and mm -hmm. peak velocity. Mm -hmm. So where's peak gonna show? It's gonna be at the end. It's gonna be through the extension. Yeah. Average is gonna be the whole entire thing. So if I'm squatting, I'm looking at average velocity. 
If I'm bench pressing, I'm looking at average velocity. If I am Olympic lifting or trap bar jumping or something like that, I'm looking at peak velocity. You know, the reason I say that is this. You know, at the end of those things in football, everything is, is like this. There's no resistance. Then all of a sudden there's impact and there's a bunch of resistance, mm -hmm. you know. And so what you're doing is is the formula of, you know, velocity or momentum. To me, the one where it differentiates players is that front end because for all, for every position, they're going to use that. Not every position, like the line, uses that. that well, and point. when I said Justice was weak, he was weak for – the way he was carrying. The, well, he was weak for a freak. I got you. I mean, you know, the, hell, they don't care. They're going to identify where a kid's weak. Yeah. But again, it's all about ready force development. And so when I'm here, how fast can I produce that? For, why are you hotter through here? Because you've had more time to carry the movement. Does that yeah. make sense? One hundred percent. So it's all about rate of pushing and forcing through the ground to where you can get there. Now there's certain things that you can do with that. Trap bar deadlift, it's a starting lift. A power clean is a dead motion lift starting strength from there, right? You can squat to a box, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, you better know what you're doing when you're box squatting, but you can box squat. There's a break in the eccentric and the concentric portions of it to where you can work those things, right? Mm -hmm. So there's certain things that you can do and the, the, the BBT will tell you some of those things depending on what you ask it to tell you what it, somebody it ain't gonna work here's the other thing pass pro here i got no power in me boys Which again, you okay me. so listen the old deal of keeping your head out of it <coughs> what you're really looking for is for their center of mass not to be forward yeah. you still want their center of mass yeah. here their head can be in it all you want as long as it's not here yeah. okay so, it's just, you know that deal where you, you get them in the ladder, you, you're teaching them to have no power in their body. <coughs> We've already said I'm more powerful in the hinge position. You can pass pro from here. You can pass pro from there. What happens is when they lunge, their center of mass is in forward. Does that make sense? And so where, where's that, where, in your opinion, where's that sweet spot between what he's talking about, like overextension? Because I, look, when I was in high school, like I, I ended up on my belly like half the time because we played in the beer, we lived under the chutes, we always had great hip hinge, right, because we had to, right, um, and we were always coiled, right? Um, but a lot of times, you know, a range of motion, or I mean, we were so tilted, you know, that it was easy. We were under center, we were running the beer, we didn't care, 
the staying on the block wasn't part of it. The ball was at the second you were You were literally, you have a lane, and whatever the hell was in that lane, I'm hitting. Yeah, yeah. And so you could. We, so none of this stuff matters. You right. don't have to readjust. So let's say, like, for the, you know, not a situation like that, you know, not Army, Navy, tooted up in a stance, you know, forward, tilt, all that. We're just running, you know, whatever, uh, a regular gap scheme or a zone scheme. Where is that sweet spot between what – because I understand what Coach is talking about, foot fire, being overextended, getting thrown off blocks, trying to sustain, right? The problem is, is what you're talking about is the position of the body. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going from here to here. Yeah. I'm no longer with my feet down the center of my body. He mentioned jerk. I, yes, okay. I when you jerk, where do you want yeah. the bar to finish? If I'm going to hit stack in the ears, stack the ears, stack the shoulder. Stack the shoulder, stack the hip, stack the hip, stack the foot. Where you can, you're most stable there. You ever tried to split jerk three fifty here? Shit don't work. No, one thing. That don't work back here neither, right? Yeah. Here, why? Because that's where I'm most stable. Yeah. One thing that Josh. You're no said, longer stable when you're here. Right, right, right. One thing that Josh said to me, what's the sweet spot? My answer to that would be depends on the play. Yeah. If you're a veer and you're giving a fullback. Man, you gotta have you gotta have the you gotta have everything behind your center of mass in movement. If you're trying to sustain a block and it's taking a long time to develop, you're just covering a guy up and you're waiting for daylight. It's probably none. You're just staying attached to it. I mean, somewhere in there, there's something in between. The yeah, right. yeah. Well, look, the, if the, you're if you're running the inside zone and I'm the left guard right here, and here's three technique. If I'm gonna get on him and I end up my center comes and I've got no help no more, right? He's climbing. Are you still just gonna, are you good with this? Especially on the back side, yeah. right? So if I'm on the back side, we need to get some vertical displacement back there, right? right. So if I get up there and waller with him right here, there's no vert, so when that ball, when that ball goes to rub, mm -hmm. he's rubbing right into the guard's hip. Does that make sense? So you can get away with on the front side, maybe covering that guy up. If you're not getting vertical displacement on the weak back side of the zone, you're gonna have a hard time right there. Now all of a sudden the guy's freaking cutting and doing this and you're going, what the hell are you doing? You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody's yelling at him because he's running sideways, push your front side. Push him. Right, but for me, even on the front side, or I say it's outside zone, right? Well, on the outside zone, the front, on the front side of the outside zone, me anyway, I want some vertical displacement because if the bar start, ball starts bending, I want some freaking movement off the ball. Not as important necessarily back here. We get it cut off, we're okay, right? Now, even back there, I get on the guys. And, and they, look, if that guy's going that way, we're getting yards. Does that make sense? So if I go up there and I freaking throw everything I got, and he shoots his dang, and I'm yelling at my guy to stay low, and I'm doing this, he ain't going that way. It ain't happening unless you're better. You know, if you're better, then you're better, and it don't matter. But you're going to run into not better at some point. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you ain't going to be better. It's all about what you're trying to do. I'm not saying you're wrong. Right, right, right. I, I, but I will say this. You're never going to vertically displace a guy doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So did the same you, guy. Didn't you say, too, when you were talking about the hip, rolling the hips earlier, that guys will naturally going to get into that? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So where I, where I find the sweet spot is – we never come out of the hip bend unless we've created vertical displacement, right? Go. And then we naturally get into the hip roll after I've created vertical But displacement. how much do you have to coach that? Like, well, how do you got two hand it? block? Not much. One hand block, yeah. Sure. For whatever reason, when, you, when you're when you using post guys on combos, right. for whatever reason, I got guys that throw football that are great to get in that position with two hand block. You throw a one hand down block in there, it's, it's, it's a whole different story. We spend more time getting in that position with one hand block than two hand block and trying to frame that. Mm -hmm. so. But you don't have to necessarily coach the, the, the extension of the hips. A lot of times it happens naturally. A lot of the reason with the, if you're on the outside zone and you're the trailer, okay, it's that bracing position mm -hmm. that you're in because you're moving um, here and naturally when I'm in one hand, I want to trail to look and see if that one, because this one's free. Now, a lot of times we do things with two hands and we feel good about it. Like I can slap him in the face right now with two hands, but one hand, you know, it's a little, little different. You know what I'm saying? It's just a hand-eye coordination kind of stuff. You know what I mean? 
But you're exactly right. I don't know how much you have to coach it. Like, it, it, the kids don't naturally kind of do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the exact thing with moving the truck. When the truck gets moving, you don't have to stay its hands anymore. I got it going. Yeah. Now I can try to get some speed in that thing. And at some point, you may end up freaking accelerating with your feet like this. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. Anything else? Balls and balls so much, but I asked our receivers coach. I was like, "Hey, if we know they're in cover three, and we know Amari is just way faster than that guy right there, why don't you give him a three point chance?" Because <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna blow his damn doors off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he's always <coughs> got so much in it. But well, you know, it, it, playing receiver now, you got so many things. Right? You got to freaking read wrong coverage and break routes off and you, you know you, you got to adjust side adjust so you can't do it so in other words you're up here now and you're doing this and then okay it's time to go and then i'm freaking dropping and going but back in the day they didn't have receivers on three point chance why because they can create so much chance now your feet are in the ground a little bit more so your shin angle is not going to be what it's going to be when you're doing it like a 40 yard dash right so a 40 yard dash when i teach our kids to go to camps and those kind of things, the 40 yard stance is actually incredibly uncomfortable when you're doing it right. I mean, the blood's rushing to your head, everything is leaned forward, you're bunched up, you don't feel good. That's why we pop, set, and freaking go. Because you're actually, you're freaking, what you're trying to do is create the most tension you can. You're trying to create a freaking spring that's just core. Well, you can do that as an offensive. I'll say this. Uh, you power clean, right? When you get on that bar, right before you start, okay, you address, I'll roll back, heads up, hopefully you're lighting them laps up. What's the very last thing you do? Brace. Because if you're going to do that when you're lifting, because you're talking about rate of force development, and you're getting in, last thing you do is freaking brace up. Why would you not do?